you really took a break from journalism. You and I have talked about this a lot as friends, and this marks your return. What was it about this story particularly that drew you in? When I got the call and I was told about these two women, Chris Kramers and Lisanne Froon, 21, 22 years old, tourists, they go to Panama on this hike eight years ago and were never seen alive again. So two months after that, 1% of one body appears and 13% of the other body. The government quickly said this was a hiking accident. But how does 99% of a body disappear in the jungle? So the more that I looked into it, the more that things didn't add up. And then I found out that one of the girls' backpack was found with delicate electronics almost intact. There are two bras, Alicia, and a camera with over 100 photos, eerie Blair Witch Project type photos at night, which actually hinted at a much larger and darker story. So I went on the ground and this actually launched a real time race against time to find new evidence and to push the government to reopen the case. Though we have some exclusive audio from Lost in Panama, let's take a listen. When we arrived, we found a tiny cloistered town. I got an email that literally says, kill. Hiding a dark secret. Cinco muertos. Cinco muertos. It says five dead. Five people were killed after Chris and Lasanne went missing. He said, because they killed the Dutch girl's mother. Because I saw them with the Dutch girls, they're going to kill me. But I know when you report on a story like this, it's hard to get people to talk to you. It's hard to get people to trust you. What kind of challenges did you run into? I mean, I knew that I was going to face government corruption, which is rampant Central America, cases of femicide. I knew there could be possible cartel connections. You heard it there. My life was threatened in a way, Alicia, like it has never been threatened, not even being in Cuba, in China, in Mexico. But what it was is that this is a tiny cloister town. So this is almost like the town's dirty little secret. Everybody knows and theorizes about what happened to these women, but nobody wants to talk. You know, you said a word there that I want to pull out, which is femicide, because these are two white women. The case revolves around tourists in this community. How do you then extrapolate out to the larger challenges facing women in South and Central America? So this is obviously the case of two women who, if you look at the true crime genre, are ideal true crime victims. But we found when we got on the ground that for this 40 mile radius of Panama, so we're not talking about El Salvador, we're not talking about Honduras, this is supposed to be a paradise of expats and tourists, an alarmingly high number of missing women and girls, over 50 cases unsolved since 2009. I even interviewed uh, the husband of a woman, Stephanie Rodriguez, who got lost and then was found in a dumpster. This man was so scared to speak to us. I had to talk to him in his car in a parking garage because he didn't want to come out with the fact that this was a case of femicide. So I am doing the story for Chris and Lasanne. Their case deserves all the attention and justice for their families, but also those women with indigenous names, with Latino names, black and brown women, and we see it here in this country as well, that deserve the media attention. Mariana, I have about 30 seconds left. What surprised you most doing this project? The fact that I am still debating with my team whether this was an accident or a murder. And I hope that listeners tune in and care about the story as much as we do and help us find some answers.